Hello and welcome to my Tense and Aspect workshop. I'm calling it a workshop instead of a webinar just because it is a little bit more technical because I'm talking about grammatical stuff and normally I avoid talking grammar unless I actually have to because people have a limited uh, attention span for it. Um, I am Amanda Schaffner. I am hosting this workshop as a part of The Writing Sidekick, which you can find more information about at thewritingsidekick.com. Um, you may also know of me. I am also on thepathofleastrevision.com and also amandashoffer.com. And in case you don't know me, um, I run The Path of Least Revision and The Writing Sidekick, and I used to be an, an, an English teacher and I had, uh, I was teaching English as a second language, and I did teach grammar. So a lot of this is what I used to teach, which is why I'm calling it a workshop. Um, I am assuming that going into this, that one, you are a native speaker of English, so you may not know the terms, but it's your language. You probably still understand the concept. And that you have read the two posts that I shared with you. And if you're watching on the replay, I will include the links underneath the video. Um, but I'm covering a lot of what went on in that in, in those posts but also giving you the opportunity to ask questions there should be the Q&A option I'm opening it up now so if you have questions drop them in and otherwise uh, we will get started here is my tense and aspect chart I'm actually going to skip future tense in this workshop just because I'm focusing more on uh, fiction and editing fiction or even nonfiction and oftentimes we don't really use future tense especially in narrative and so I'm just going to focus on past and present but this is kind of how it is this is my nice chart gives you a pretty good idea um, PP is the past participle, and um, that's like the one, one grammatical term I just can't get around. Um, but you know what a past participle is, even if you don't know the name. You often find them used as adjectives, like the written word. Written is the past participle. Um, you form past participles by adding ed to the verb but you do have irregular verbs like be is been, write is written, uh, come stays the same, bring turns to brought, have, had, so that's pretty, pretty standard. And let's start talking about tense. Uh, fiction is most often written in past tense and Sam had a question about this earlier on the Google Plus page and um, she asked if are, are there tense choices that make more sense for certain genres and I said no um, like fiction is most often written in past tense though present tense is totally an option it really has to um, depend on the story so if it makes sense for your story. I know that um, books like The Hunger Games and um, the Divergent series, both of those I believe were written in present tense and it really, um, using present tense really puts the reader in that moment and really you experience the story with the reader and that's also in first person present tense and so it really depends on what 
what works for your story. So you really have to make a decision based on your story, not necessarily the genre that you're writing in or anything else. But you will find most often that everything is, is in past tense. And if you are writing in a specific tense, that doesn't mean everything is in that tense. Because if you're writing in past tense, you'll find that you have dialogue and maybe even internal thoughts that are going to have to be in present tense or future tense. And then if you're writing in past tense, you might have to refer to something that happens in the past, so you'll use past tense. So you're never really locked into, um, you're, not, you're never locked into a tense, so it's all in the same tense. Now, I talked about tense, but what I really want to focus on here is aspect. Because you know tense. Tense is easy, but within tense you have aspect, and aspects gives more information about what's going on. And to really be effective when you're editing and writing, you need to know aspect and how it works. So we're starting off with the simple aspect, and this is what people typically think of when they think of tense. You think of past tense, you think you add ed to the verb. That's the simple aspect. Or in present tense, you add s for he, she, it, right? That's simple tense or simple aspect. You use it to indicate state and you the verbs that you would use for that would be be, look, seem, appear. Those are all states. Um, in the present tense you use them for facts or habits. In the past tense you use them for actions that started and completed in the past. So they're completely started, ended, in the past. It's pretty it, this aspect is, as it's named, simple. Here are some examples. So you have the grass is green. It's in present tense. It's a fact. Every morning, she drinks two cups of coffee. Present habit. The other thing here with habits is that you often have certain phrases that go along with it, like every morning, or once a month, or twice a week. Those are often going to be habits. Uh, she looks sad. So you have a present tense state. Your doctor called the house yesterday. Okay, past. Completed action. The call started and ended yesterday. We were home yesterday. That's where we were. Pretty simple. Then we have the continuous aspect. I've also heard this called progressive aspect and it is essentially the exact same thing. They're used the same. I'm, cho I'm choosing continuous because that's what I feel like at the moment. Now this is important because it is the most overused aspect. I am going to blame this on McDonald's. You know their slogan is I'm loving it. That is actually a verb that's not supposed to be in the continuous aspect. In the continuous aspect you um, create by using the be verb and then the ing form. So I'm loving it. It's actually not supposed to be like that. So McDonald's is not grammatical. And this is very common in our writing. We use it when the simple aspect or the perfect aspect actually is really the better choice. Now the reason we use continuous is because we want to focus on the continuation of an action. That's where it gets its name. And in the present tense we use the continuous aspect to show something that is actually happening like at that moment. And past continuous, there are really two reasons that you use it. One you want to compare two actions in the past when one was in progress, right? When one was continuing, when another one happened. And you also use it to refer to a specific time in the past. 
So here are some examples. I am writing about aspects, right? When I was typing that sentence, I was writing about aspects. At 10 p.m. last night, so there's our specific time, I was getting ready for bed. When we have two actions, I was replying to your email when you called. I was replying to your email is our longer event. That's what was in progress. That was what was continuing when the call happened. You can actually also use present continuous to indicate future actions. I'm leaving at 7, right? It may it may be 3 in the afternoon when you say it, but, you're say, but you might say, yes, I'm leaving the house at 7 tonight. Moving on to the perfect aspect. Unlike its name, it's not perfect, at least as far as I know. All right, so you use the perfect aspect to connect two time periods or to indicate an unspecified time in the past. So you'll often hear for, since, ever, and never with this aspect. And you will see that in the examples. Uh, but you create the perfect aspect using have, some form of have, and the past part of participle. The PP. Here are some examples. She has lived in Minnesota for 20 years. There, there are phrase, right, that's present and we're connecting the past. So 20 years in the past she was either born or came to live in Minnesota and now here in the present she is still living here. I have traveled to Canada. It's present tense, but it's an unspecified unspecified time. So we don't know when I traveled to Canada, just that I did at some point. By the time he got home, we had already eaten. So now we're connecting two events in the past, eating and coming home and This one is, um, this one is what I call the past past tense because we'd already eaten, happened even farther in the past than him getting home. We also had, she had never been out of the country before she, before she studied abroad. So this is almost like a, an unspecified unspecified time one but also connecting two events. So one, the closest to the present time is that she studied abroad. The further one, the unspecified one, is that she'd never been out of the country. Then you can take the perfect aspect and the continuous aspect and combine them together to get the perfect continuous aspect. And it connects two events, but focuses on the continuation of an action. Again, it's overused just because it, it's the ING. We gravitate towards that ING when we shouldn't. And you always kind of want to make sure that you rephrase. You can... Um, it can be used to express causality, and you use a, a form of have with been. So been is actually your, um, it's the past participle of perfect, but it's also the be verb of the continuous. Here are some examples. She has been living in Minnesota for 20 years. This is present, and we're putting an emphasis on the fact that she's still in Minnesota. She's still here. Sometimes you can say she's lived in Minnesota. Um, 
it could it could mean that she doesn't live there anymore. So if you really want to put the emphasis on the fact that she still is here, then you would use perfect continuous. All right, I had been studying for three hours when you arrived. So my studying, right, that's the ongoing long event. And when you arrived is the more recent event. And then he grounded his daughter because she had been lying about her school attendance. That is causality. We know that had his daughter not been lying, right, she wouldn't have been grounded. Alright, so what you should take away from aspect. If you spot something with ing and it's in the it's in a verb, check to see if you can rephrase it. I can't stress this enough. Because using the continuous aspect, whether it's just straight continuous or perfect continuous, can make it seem like you hit pause on your narrative. You hit pause and you say, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening, and then you hit play again and your narrative continues. So if you don't want that pause effect, sometimes it's okay if you use it as it's supposed to be used, you're okay, but you don't want your narrative to feel like you have to hit pause and the story completely halt while you describe what's going on and then continue. The other thing is use past perfect to help readers um, distinguish between two events. And this is so, so, so important if your book is in past tense because you're already writing in past tense. So you have to make sure that the reader understands that whatever you're talking about isn't happening at that point in the story, that it actually happened in the story's past. Those are the big ones. And then, now, the reason that I decided to talk about tense and aspect first before sliding into passive voice is for a reason that you will see. So, passive voice is used to shift emphasis. That right there is a passive statement. It is. But I don't want to say we use passive voice to shift emphasis. I want to put emphasis on passive voice itself because that's what we're talking about. So we use passive voice when we don't know who the actor is, the subject. right? We say she was murdered. murdered. We don't know who murdered her. And that's not the point of the sentence. The point is her. She was murdered. Okay, we want to put the focus of the sentence on the action, situation, or object. So she was found murdered in her home. Doesn't necessarily matter who found her, right? We're putting the emphasis on really the action and situation here is that she was found murdered in her home. Or, the actor wishes to diminish his or her role. This happens a lot in academic writing. The data were analyzed. Because in um, academic studies, in scientific studies, uh, you don't want... Well, I analyzed the, the data because that sounds very biased. And so if you take yourself out of the equation, it's supposed to diminish your role and seem less biased. Now, this is how you create passive voice. You have some form of to be and the past participle. You can create passive voice in any tense aspect combination. You can. It doesn't matter. Okay? It's not just was plus the past participle. It's not just it it can be in any um, in any tense aspect combination, although if you tried it, 
in all of them, some of them would sound really weird. And you'll know that they're wrong. But, so you will most often create passive voice in the simple, continuous, and perfect aspects. And if you need an easy test that certainly doesn't work for everything, you can use the buy zombies tactic. This was made famous by someone, this is not mine, by the way, this is uh, another English teacher who was trying to figure out how to teach her students to identify the passive voice, and it does work. You just tack on buy zombies, <laughs> and you can figure it out, and I will um, show you in just a second. Now, this chart here is how you create passive voice depending on the tense and aspect. So you'll see here you always have the past participle, but the be verb itself comes in in different ways. You see in simple tense, it's am, is, are, was, were, will be in continuous. It's actually being. That is the start of the passive voice. And in perfect, it's been. Here are some examples. Passive voice is used by many writers. I'm assuming zombies aren't using passive voice because they generally just grunt. Um, but here, instead of saying many writers use passive voice, I want to put the emphasis on passive voice itself. Here we have, the lamp was broken by zombies during a scuffle. We know this is past tense because we're putting the emphasis on the, the action in the situation, the lamp break, breaking, and not who did it, whether it's zombies or your little brother or maybe you. Uh, we, we're putting the emphasis on the lamp breaking itself. The books are being shipped. We have present continuous. So here, maybe you're really excited about getting um, books that you ordered, and you're all excited. You're like, yes, the books are finally being shipped. You're not saying who shipped them. You may not even, well, you should know the store that's shipping your books, but you might not know the specific person. So they just are being shipped. All right, at 7 last night, the room was being used. Well, this is past continuous, and we're talking about specific time, and perhaps the room was being used by zombies. Although, generally, I don't know that zombies congregate in a single room, but you never know. All right, that customer has been helped. That is in present perfect, and... Here the focus is on the fact that the customer that's probably waiting, um, that someone has helped them. doesn't matter who helped them, just that they have been helped. And the phone had been handled by many people, which is probably why you might get sick, right? That's past perfect. All right, now we have takeaways. I think the last one is actually the most important one. Don't be afraid of it. It's kind of a fact of life. We use it in certain cases. It's good to use it. So that's why you need to know when to use it and why it's important. You can do just about anything as long as you know why you're using it and the reason behind it. So if you want to use continuous aspect, for example, go for it, as long as you're following the rules for the continuous aspect, because you want to show, you want to put emphasis on the continuation of the, the action, or you're referring to a specific event, at a specific time, in the past, right? Those are all okay, but you have to know why. So as long as you use, if you use passive voice, it's fine. Just know that you're using it and why you're using it. 
because if you can rephrase it in a different way and it sounds just as good, you're always going to want to choose active over passive. And learn how to spot it. It's always a form of to be. So you're going to see am, is, was, were, be, to be, been, been, followed by the past participle. You can tackle passive voice, I promise. All right, so that is the end of tense and aspect. If you want to get in on the writing sidekick fun, you can go to thewritingsidekick.com, and I promise we do lots of writing and less focus on, on grammar because I know that it's not fun for everyone, but also very important. Thank you for listening.